I thought you'd find a little bit of this interesting, considering I've been talking about King Charles III and the dream I had that turned out to be his royal cipher. And I'm talking about the cipher that's his mark, not the heraldry that Tim Cohen wrote about in his book in 1998. I'm talking about the royal cipher that came out after the Queen died. And it might interest you to know that due to British colonialism, King Charles III is now the monarch of 14 countries. In addition to the UK following Queen Elizabeth's death. And by the way, the UK is no longer in the Elizabethan age. They are now in what is known as the Carolean age. And Carolean is Latin for Charles or Caroline or Carolyn, and it comes from the word Carolus in Latin. Back when Liz Truss was the Prime Minister, before she was removed, she told the Commons that British people, the Commonwealth and all MPs must support Charles as he takes the country forward to a new era of hope and progress our new Carolean age. The term Carolean is derived from the word Carolus, which is the Latin for Charles. Why is it Carolean, not Caroline? Charles I reigned from 1625 to 1649 in what was known as the Caroline era. The name Caroline came from the word Carolus, the Latin for Charles. It is the passing down of this name, which is why we now refer to the new era as the Carolean Age. There is also the Carolean architecture that was flamboyant with ornate columns and elaborate colonnades. Carolean in British English of or relating to Charles III of Great Britain and Northern Ireland or his reign. Two, of or relating to Charles I or Charles II, kings of England, Scotland, and Ireland, the society over which they ruled or their government sometimes applied specifically to the reign of Charles II. The name Carolyn is a feminine and masculine name, and it is the variant of Caroline, which was derived from the common Germanic element Hari, meaning army warrior. The Carolean age that we are now in, with the death of Queen Elizabeth II, the UK has left the new Elizabethan era and entered what the Prime Minister Liz Truss had referred to as the Carolean age, which she stated September 19th, 2022. Now he's already ruling these 14 other countries of the Commonwealth. Queen Elizabeth, when she died at 96, her eldest son and former Prince of Wales, Charles, immediately became King of England upon her death. He's now recognized as King Charles III, of course, due to British colonialism, which saw the British Empire invade and conquer regions across the world for centuries. King Charles is now the monarch and head of state of the UK and 14 other countries known as the Commonwealth realms. So, since he's been part of the Royal Navy, King Charles III, and this name means army warrior, so I find it interesting that Israel is looking for an anointed one, and that always means a king that's coronated with the holy oil. He's anointed at his coronation ceremony, and that's what they're looking for in Israel to sit upon that restored throne of David. But they're looking for an earthly man who's a great military leader, and of course, you know, England has this history of this huge royal navy that conquered many places. So the countries that King Charles is ruling right now is 
The Commonwealth realms include Antigua, Barbuda, Australia, the Bahamas, Belize, Canada, Grenada, Jamaica, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Solomon Islands, and Tuvalu. The king's role as monarch of these countries is largely symbolic and he will not be directly involved in governing as he is a head of state, not head of government. And that's why I told you that the ancient monarchy of Israel was had the deadly wound in the head by a sword and yet now lives and is being restored. And that's what it's talking about in the book of Revelation. It's possible that the number of commonwealth realms could shrink during King Charles's reign. Last year, Barbados officially removed Queen Elizabeth as its head of state and became a republic. And think about this. In the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, he was the head of gold and he was the king of Babylon. So the head of state, the deadly wound by a sword and yet lived, is the ancient monarchy, which it was amazing that the Lord had revealed that to me, and I just couldn't believe it. But it says that, okay, that Barbados became a republic after they removed Queen Elizabeth as its head of state, and officials in other current Commonwealth realms in the Caribbean have also signaled that they want out. Meanwhile, there is also an ongoing movement for independence in Scotland. And such nations is also a reminder that Queen Elizabeth presided over a dwindling empire during her reign. She was head of state of 32 countries over the course of her time on the throne, but 17 ultimately cut their ties during the same period. In addition to Barbados, the 16 countries that removed Queen Elizabeth as head of state after she ascended the throne in 1952 are Sri Lanka, Fiji, Gambia, Ghana, Guyana, Kenya, Malawi, Malta, Mauritius, Nigeria, Pakistan, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Tanzania, Trinidad and Tobago, and Uganda. Now what I'm talking about being the ancient monarchy being restored is in Revelation 13.3 where it says, One of the heads of the beast, and Daniel told us a beast is a king in the kingdom, that he serves. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. Okay, so another translation says, I saw that one of the heads of the beast seemed wounded beyond recovery. Now this was when the kingdom of Judah, they were removed from the throne, they were taken off to Babylon, and there was never another king to sit upon the throne of David from that time forward. And so that king had the deadly wound because he was the head of state, but it says, I saw that one of the heads of the beast seemed wounded beyond recovery. Now remember, we have Israel and Judah, and Judah was ruling in the southern kingdom, and then you had the ten northern tribes. But the fatal wound was healed. The whole world marveled at this miracle and gave allegiance to the beast and gave allegiance to the king, you could say. New King James says it this way, And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled and followed the king, the beast. And now listen to Revelation 13, 14. And with all the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast, he deceived all the people who belonged to this world. He ordered the people to make a great statue of the first beast 
who was fatally wounded and then came back to life. Now we know that this was a deadly wound by a sword because we see this in Revelation 13, 14. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the king, beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. So this was an ancient kingdom and a monarchy that had, you know, the head of state as the king and this deadly wound by a sword when God brought a sword against his people against the ancient monarchy of Judah and removed the temple and removed the monarchy then they had the deadly wound by a sword and yet now they've been restored as a nation Jerusalem's been proclaimed the capital of Israel eternally and of course Jerusalem was recaptured in 67 and now they are going to put a king as the head of state to rule on the throne of David. And he's going to be somebody who's got a military background, which King Charles III does, plus the history of the Royal Navy of England, which, you know, was like the mightiest royal navy ever. You see that Jeroboam was said that he would die by the sword and he was ruling over the ten northern tribes. Jeroboam in Amos 7, this is verse 11, For thus Amos is said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword and Israel shall surely be led away captive from their own land. Verse 15, Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not spout against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus says the Lord, Your wife shall be a harlot in the city. So Jerusalem is the mother of harlots. Your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land will, shall be divided by survey line, and you shall die in a defiled land, and Israel shall surely be led away captive from his own land. And all of that surely came to pass. So the leader, the you know king of the northern tribes, Jeroboam, died by the sword, and so did Judah. The Lord indicated that the deadly wound in the head by a sword, the kingdom of Judah, this happened when the king was removed from the throne and they were taken to Babylon. In Jeremiah 21, 9, we see whoever stays in this city, Jerusalem, will die by the sword, famine, or plague. But whoever goes out and surrenders to the Babylonians who are besieging you will live. They will escape with their lives. And we see in Isaiah 3, the judgment on Judah and Jerusalem. Now this doesn't mean that Jerusalem isn't restored like it is today. This means in ancient times, this is what God did and he brought this judgment. And so we see in the book of Revelation, the restoration of this monarchy and the head of state. So it says... In Isaiah 3, starting in verse 1, For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stock and the store, the whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet, the diviner and the elder, the captain of fifty and the honorable man, the counselor and the skillful artisan, and the expert enchanter, I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. The people will be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child will be insolent towards the elder, and the base toward the honorable. When a man takes hold of his brother in the house of his father, saying, You have clothing, you be our ruler, and let these ruins be under your power. In that day he will protest, saying, I cannot cure your ills, for in my house is neither food nor clothing. Do not make me a ruler of the people. 
For Jerusalem stumbled and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Look on their countenance witnesses against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought evil upon themselves. Say to the righteous that if it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, those who lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your paths. problem with these kings is that they became filthy rich and they were not caring for you know the common citizen they were fattening themselves with luxuries and delicacies so oppression and luxury was condemned the Lord stands up to plead and stands to judge the people the Lord will enter into judgment with the elders of his people and his princes for you have eaten up the vineyard the plunder of the poor is in your houses what do you mean by crushing my people and grinding the faces of the poor, says the Lord God of hosts? Moreover, the Lord says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, making a jingling with their feet, therefore the Lord will strike with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will uncover her secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the finery, the jingling anklets, the scarves and the crescents, the pendants, the bracelets and the veils, the headdresses, the leg ornaments and headbands, the perfume boxes, the charms, the rings, nose jewels and festal apparel and the mantles, the outer garments, the purses and the mirrors, the fine linen, the turbans and the robes. And so it shall be. Instead of a sweet smell, there will be a stench. Instead of a sash, a rope. Instead of a well-set hair, baldness. Instead of a rich robe, a girding of sackcloth and branding instead of beauty. Your men shall fall by the sword and your mighty in the war. Her gates shall lament and mourn and she being desolate shall sit on the ground. So they would sit on the ground and throw dust on their heads in lamentation and mourning. Now when Israel and Judah were taken captive into Babylon, this is what was said in Lamentations 5. 15. The joy of our heart has ceased. So they're lamenting all of the calamity coming upon them and the calamity of the monarchy of Judah being removed by God and taken away by a sword. They said the joy of our heart has ceased. Our dance has turned into mourning. Listen, the crown has fallen from our head woe to us for we have sinned the crown has fallen from our head and because of this our heart is faint because of these things our eyes grow dim because of Mount Zion which is desolate with foxes walking about on it you O Lord remain forever your throne from generation to generation why do you forget us forever and forsake us for so long a time? Turn us back to you, O Lord, and we will be restored. Renew our days as of old, unless you have utterly rejected us and are very angry with us. So when this earthly king that Israel will accept and place this king upon the throne of David, because he has an ancestry that claims to go back to David and Solomon, then he will be the anointed one which means Messiah and he will become the head of state and that deadly wound by a sword of ancient times is restored and people will worship this beast this king who's now sitting upon the restored throne of Israel and Judah that was you know placed under judgment by God and if you don't believe that the Scarlet Harlot is, you know, Mystery Babylon the Great is Jerusalem, just remember that um, 
the prophet Daniel, as I've said millions of times, that him being a prince of the monarchy of Judah, he was wanting to see that monarchy restored in Jerusalem. So that's what's happening in the book of Revelation, I realized, and the monarchy being restored. And of course, uh, you know, you've got everything in every country that's been tainted by Babylon because of the diaspora and these people taking elements of Babylon into the other nations. And they're all going to come there and worship in Jerusalem in that third temple. And this king is going to easily sit upon the throne, as I told you, as an absolute monarchy, which means that the people can be told to worship him as a god because that's what happens in these kind of absolute monarchies. Then you have it all fall into place where the people have no say and they're being directed by the king as what they can and can't do and the laws are made by the Supreme Court with the help of the king and all of this world government, world religion headed by this king will be there in Jerusalem the one that played the scarlet harlot against God, and God brought the sword against her. So now she's being restored. The next things on the list are the anointing of that king and him being put into place and him ruling over the land and its people, as well as allowing the third temple to be built so that he can sit there on that throne as a divine right of kings claiming to be a god, a representative of God. And this is going to be somebody who's definitely got all of the parameters that King Charles III does have. And um, I talked about this in regards to the royal cipher of my dream and you know I'm the one who talked about Tim Cohen's book a long time ago in saying that you know he he did a study on the heraldry of Charles but my dream was about the royal cipher being the mark and it is the king's mark so the mark of the beast is a mark of a king which is his royal cipher and I told you that the Lord had revealed to me in my dream, and that royal cipher equals zero. Cipher equals zero, by definition. And net zero is what King Charles has gotten his carbon footprint down to, supposedly, or at least attempting to. And carbon is the 666. So they said that he would be the first climate change king. So this is a lot of information. I don't want to make it too long, but just give you some interesting uh, study on the fact that he's already ruling the commonwealth of these 14 countries. And it wouldn't be too hard for the Sanhedrin, when they get into power, to be the world supreme court and the world religion coming there with Islam and the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church just like the Abrahamic house that they have there in the UAE kind of all setting the stage for coming there to Jerusalem and having a representative of the 70 nations sit in the Sanhedrin building that they intend to build. How soon this will happen I don't really know but we definitely are watching something unfold and definitely the Lord has unveiled this before our eyes. The Lord gave me so many pieces of this puzzle and I'm just really remaining shocked about it. You know, the, but the UK is now under the Carolean age. Good night everybody.